Hi, this is Kevin from Mathsaurus, and in this video, we're going to look at questions 16 to 20 of the Grey Kangaroo from 2021. The pink and the grey kangaroos are follow-on rounds from the UKMT Intermediate Maths Challenge. So if you do really well in the Intermediate Maths Challenge, then you can go on to take the kangaroo. You will do the grey kangaroo if you're in year nine in England or equivalent years elsewhere, and you will do the pink kangaroo if you're in years 10 uh, or 11. And there are also uh, Olympiad rounds you can qualify for as well, the Cayley, Hamilton and McLaurin papers, again for each of those three uh, different year groups if you do very well in the math challenges. So these questions are kind of a harder version of IMC papers, so they are also great preparation if you're taking the intermediate math challenge. But I actually don't think you should watch this video because I've put all of these questions uh, as well as the solutions and also some video hints into free online courses that you can sign up for by clicking down below. There are courses for the Intermediate Maths Challenge, for Junior, Senior Challenges as well, and for the Kangaroos. And you can take those courses, you can try the questions, uh, you can have a look at the hints, you can check your answers before you watch the video solutions. And it's really the best way to use this content to prepare for the challenges. Unlike here on YouTube, there are no ads or distra distractions over there as well. And there are upgraded courses, go for gold in math challenges, where you can really master the content and get well prepared uh, for the math challenges if you want to. Uh, but the free courses are really substantial and really useful, and you can get a lot just by doing those as well. So I really encourage you to click on the link below and to sign up for one of those courses now. If you'd rather stay here on YouTube, of course, you're very welcome. Um, please do like the video and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. It really helps me get the content out there. Um, so let's get on uh, with these questions now. In this fraction, the numerator and the denominator are positive. Uh, so let's say it's just x over y, and I increase the fraction, uh, the numerator I mean, by 40%. So an increase by 40% corresponds to a scale factor of 1.4. So on the top, I'm going to get 1.4x. So if I need to keep these uh, fractions so that this one is now double the original fraction, right, I actually want this to be equal to 2 times x over y. So the numerator needs to be double the denominator. Um, that's what I mean the number here, right? The x and the y will still be there. Um, but if I make 1.4 is double 0.7, right? So this would be the same as 2x over 1y. So I'm going to replace y with 0.7y. And multiplying by 0.7 corresponds to a decrease of 30%. Okay. Um, converting these scale factors to percentages if that's not something you've done before, right? You know, if you say, uh, like, uh, if I start with x and I add 20%, right, 20% of x would be 0.2x, so if I added on, I would get 1.2x, right? Whereas if I, say, had 40% uh, of x, that would be 0.4x. If I do x minus 0.4x, that gives me 0.6x, right? So, you know, in general, if you want to increase a number by, say, 32%, you would multiply by 1.32. If I wanted to decrease it by 32%, I would do 100 minus 32, which gives me uh, 68, and I would times by 0.68. I'm effectively either finding 132% of the answer or 68% uh, of the answer. Um, so uh, there we go. The answer here is C, 30%. So I'm actually going to do this question twice because I think there's two very neat methods uh, for solving this. Uh, that are just as good as each other. So let's say we take 2PQRST and multiply it by 3, okay, and we get the result PQRST2, okay. Um, now, multiplying uh, by uh, 3 has quite a nice property, and if you've taken my uh, Go for Gold in Math Challenge courses, you'll know all about. Uh, these properties of last digits of numbers, and when you multiply numbers together, the last digit of the result is the product of the last digits, right? So when I do 347 and I multiply it by 46, 7 times 6 is 42, and that's going to be the last digit of the result, right? Now, that's quite nice with multiplying by 3, because if you take all of the different uh, possible uh, last digits and multiply it by 3, right? 3, 6, 9, uh, 12 has last digit 2, 5 times 3 is 15, has last digit 5, right? 6 times 3 is 18, has last digit 8, 7 times 3 has last digit 1, 8 times 3 has last digit 4, 9 times 3 has last digit 7, 
and 0 times 3 would be 0, you see they're all different. So that means that if I do t times 3, the last digit has to be 2. The only way that can be is if t is 4, and then 4 times 3 is 12. Okay, so I get 4 times 3 is 12, and also uh, because I know t is 4 and that's got to appear down here, then I get a 4 here as well. So when I look at s, I know 3 times s has to end in a 3 because of the carrying of the 1, right? If I do this calculation, I'll do 3 times s plus the 1 and then I'll get the 4. So the only thing that ends in a 3 here is what is, is 1, so s must be 1, and now um, so 3 times 1 is 3 plus 1 gives me the 4, no carrying this time, and I get a 1 here. Um, and then r, uh, well, 3 times r has to end in a 1, so that would have to be 7 here, right? So r must be 7, I'd get 3 times 7 is 21, and again, the question then tells me that there's r here as well, so that's 7. So when I look for q, 3 times q plus 2 has to end in 7, so 3 times q has to end in 5, so actually q must be 5, so I do 3 times 5 is 15, uh, plus 2 is 17, and I'd carry a 1. And then I've got to think about the p here, well oh, again, so I also get the 5 being here from the question. So now 3 times p plus 1 is 5, so 3 times p ends in a 4, uh, so to end in a 4 it must be 8, so p must be 8. 3 times 8 is 24 plus 1, that gives me that 25. And again, the question tells me then that I've got an 8 here. And um, then we can check, of course, that hey, when I do 3 times 2 uh, plus 2, we get 8. And we're told there's 2 here. Right, so PQRST is 85714. And if I add the digits together, 8 plus 5 plus 7 plus 1 plus 4, I'm going to get 25. And so, um, uh, so the answer here. Uh, oh, sorry, I also need to add on the 2 because I want the digit sum of the whole number. Um, so uh, it's 2 plus 8 plus 5 plus 7 1 plus 1 plus 4. Um, so that's 27, and that means that the answer here is B. So that's one really nice way of doing this question. Um, a second way of solving it, which I also uh, like a lot, is to say, OK, let's just let X be this whole number, P, Q, R, S, T. Well, if I write down the number... 2pqrst, that's then effectively 200,000 plus x, right? Where well, I'm now thinking of these as you know, digits, right? But if I write this other number, pqrst2, right? Well, pqrst with a zero after it, just adding a digit to the end of whatever it is, would be 10 times pqrst, 10x. So this must be 10x plus 2. So um, what it says now, I, so I multiply this first one by 3. So I do 3 times 200,000 plus x. And I get this one, which is 10 times x plus 2. So multiplying out here, it must be that 600,000 plus 3x is equal to 10x plus 2. Subtracting 2 from both sides, I get 599998. And subtracting the 3x from both sides, I get that that's equal to 7x. So if I just do this division, 59998, uh, and then I divide that by 7 carefully, uh, 59 divided by 7 is 8 with 3 left over, 39 divided by 7 is 5 with 4 left over, and um, here I get exactly 7. Uh, 9 divided by 7 is 1 with 2 left over, and then I get 4, and you can see I get exactly the same number. So again, I want to just add the digits of that number together, 2 plus 8 plus 5 plus 7 plus 1 plus 4, and again, that gives me uh, 27, obviously, just as it did before. Um, so either way, the answer is B, but actually worth doing that question in two ways, because I think they're both really uh, elegant solutions to this problem. So all I've done here is I've just reordered these three diagrams um, in a way that I think is quite helpful. Um, and what we're looking at, to be clear here, is like each side of this pyramid, right? So like this first one, right, this might be that this one is D, B, C, E, A, B, C, B, uh, A, D, right? And that would be this side of it. And it says that these are each of the different sides. Now, the reason I put it in this order is, right, because... Uh, like this one now could be this side to the right of it, right? Because it's got D at the top, and then this would be like C, A, B, uh, E, D along here, and D, E, C, A. 
Now, there's a bit of a visualization problem here because I can't see that I can't write the ones on the back. But writing it in this order, you see, um, like uh, we've got these ones matching up with these ones, and these ones matching up with these ones, right? So, in terms of the cannonballs, right? Let's say I've got, I've got all these ones on the on this side. Well, um, these ones I've already got in this picture, right? So I'm just going to cross them out, right? And similarly, all of these ones already exist in this picture, right? So let's get rid of those. And actually, this BEC is already here in this picture, right? So by crossing out the ones that overlap, I'm left just with the unique cannibals that we can see. Um, now, how many, how many of each type uh, do we have in these pictures, right? Well, there's one, two, three, uh, four A's that I can see, uh, one, two, three, four B's, uh, one, two, uh, three, four C's, uh, one, two, three D's, and let's just check, one, two, three, four E's. So there's one less D than all of the others, but it does say that there are four of each type. So the one that we can't see, the one that's like hidden in the middle of this stack, uh, that isn't, isn't facing out on any of the sides, must be a type D. And so the answer here is D. So this is a counting question, really. Uh, we've got white hexagons and black pentagons as seen in the picture making up this football, and there are 12 pentagons in total. And what you can see is that each pentagon has uh, five uh, hexagons sort of attached to it. So my starting point for this calculation is 12 times 5, which is 60, right? So if I just said, ah, every pentagon has six, and there's 12 of them, like this, well, there's, I'd count those six, I'd count those six, I'd count those six, I'd count those six. But look, I'm going to be counting uh, some of these more than once, right? And if you think about each uh, hexagon, right, it's actually got one, two, three pentagons that it would be counted on for. So if I just count them like this as 12 times 5, I'm going to count exactly three times as many as I'd want. So I need to divide this answer by three, and then the answer is D20. So to make this positive integer the smallest one whose digits add to 41, uh, we wanted to obviously have as few digits as possible. Um, numbers with more digits are going to be bigger, whatever the digits are, um, and uh, we then want the first digit to be um, as small as possible. Um, so like, so if I want them to add to 41, what I would do is I would take the digits to be as many nines as I can, 9999 nine, nine, nine gives me 36, and then if I take a 5, that would give me 41, and I want to put the 5 at the beginning. Um, any other combination of f 5 digits is going to uh, involve having a number bigger than five at the start because I'd kind of have to like take one away from the one of the nines and then um, and then the smallest number would be bigger um, and the only way I can make the first digit smaller than five then is to have more digits which would make the number bigger so this is the number we're looking for five nine 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 and we just need to add uh, 2021 to it getting the current year of the maths challenge in it as they do so often nine plus one is ten nine plus two plus one is twelve um, 9 plus 1 plus 0 is 10, 9 plus 1 plus 2 is 12, and then uh, 1 plus 5 is 6, so I get 62020, um, and the sum of the digits here is 6 plus 2 plus 0 plus 2 plus 0 then, 6 plus 2 plus 2 is 10, and so the answer here is A. So I really hope you found this video useful. Don't forget, if you're preparing for maths challenges at any level, I've made free courses for all of the maths challenges. You can find links. Uh, in the descriptions below. Uh, click there and sign up to those now. No payment details required, uh, nothing like that. So you can sign up totally free of charge. There are some up upgraded courses as well with some extra content. If you really want to master the challenges, you can sign up for those as well. But there's loads over there uh, for free. So I really hope that I will see you over there soon.